Gary and Leslie here at TCMLive.com. Leslie, how you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing most excellent. Yes. You know, I am kind of sad, though, because this is the last webisode in our series uh, talking about identity theft. I know. It's kind of sad. Yeah, I think we should take a moment of silence. Okay, okay, moving that's on. Long that's good. <laughs> All right. Tonight, <laughs> tonight we're talking about spiritual identity theft. Yes, we are. And I'm really excited about tonight's show. Me too. You know, one of the quotes that I wanted to share because I've been reading this really good book mm-hmm. called Victory Out of the Darkness by Neil Anderson. And one of the things that he says was the only identity equation that works is you plus Christ equals wholeness and meaning. I like that. I love that, yeah. Because the whole thing is, once we have Christ in our life, then we know that we have wholeness and we have meaning for our life, purpose for our life. Our life makes sense. Outside of Christ, we may be waffling a little. We might not know what's going on. You know, and what I like about that is it it succinctly brings together the physical and the spiritual. Absolutely. Because, you know, you start out in your physical life, especially being separated from God with sin. Right. And once you're able to, to conquer that physical part, and what I mean by that is the desires of, oh, I'll do God, I'll do that God thing later, you know, right. I've got time, or I'm not good enough. Once you get over that and you realize that God wants you just the way that you are, that you're never going to be good enough, right. you just have to come to Him and you have to open up. Once you realize that, then you start tasting a little bit more of that spiritual. And that's the two parts that we want to talk about here with you tonight is uh, the the, the physical and the spiritual. And the physical is made up of the body, which would be the flesh, and the desires of the flesh, and the needs of the flesh, Mm -hmm. and the wants of the flesh, and mind, emotion, and will. Mm -hmm. And what guides and directs the body is our appetite, whether that's um, literal appetite, what we want to eat, whether that's sexual appetite, what we want to feel, Mm -hmm. whether that's emotional appetite, what feeds us, or, or what we feel like feels best to express. And what guides that is our, and you guys are going to hate to hear this, but it's the honest truth, your sinful nature, that which is in you that is not of God. Yeah, I mean, think about it. How many times have you guys out there, have you taken your emotions, your physical emotions, Mm -hmm. what you feel, and applied it towards your spiritual sins. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, oh, well, I really feel like I want to do this, or I really like this guy, I really like this girl, or I really feel like I need to make this move. And I know that it might not really be seen as being right by God, but he'll stop me. Right. He'll stop me if I'm not supposed to do it. And we attribute the physical to the spiritual. Right. We try to speak for the spiritual part. And you know, Leslie, what that does is, I don't know if you guys ever thought about this or not, but it actually stunts your physical growth. Right. And you continue to grow physically, uh, but in the wrong direction. Right. Because the sin nature starts taking you over even more right. to where you become callous. It's kind of like, I don't know how many of you out there play guitar. Mm-hmm. You ever tried to play guitar, but after a little while, you develop calluses. Right. And you, that actually happens to your heart and to your mind and to your morals. Right. You start getting calluses. And so the sin doesn't bother you as much. You can justify uh, just about anything. Yeah. And that's the danger yeah. that right now that we are facing with social media. And if any of you watched the Grammys last week, I mean... Really, we are seeing this outburst of physicality where people's physical flesh beings are dominating what God created in us, which is the spiritual side. And the mm-hmm. spiritual side of us is made up of the same things, the mind, emotions, and will, mm-hmm. but it's led and directed by the spirit or by the soul. That part of us that's eternal, not that part of us that's going to die. That part of us that thinks towards what will this action do in the long run? Who will this affect? Is this showing love? Is this yeah. showing peace? Is this showing joy, which would be the fruits of the spirit? And not looking at the carnal flesh and saying, what fills my belly now? Yeah, and there's a lot of things that people use to justify what yeah. you're talking about. I know one of them most recently that God showed me is this. You know how you hear a lot of people, especially in the church, they'll talk about, well, you know, if the, you know, they, they, they quote Jesus and say, you know, if the world hates you, know that it hated me first. Right. A lot of people take that, and I believe 
they take it out of context because they try to justify a lot of things that they shouldn't. Right. Because if you and I talked about this in Sunday school last Sunday to my college class. And here's the thing you have to look at though. Jesus was actually a very likable person. Very much so. He really was. The 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 general population and uh, granted I want to let you know the general population was not ignorant. They were not dumb. They knew a lot about the scriptures. They knew a lot about God because the way they're uh, culture was. Right. But they loved Jesus. He came in, he fed people, he sat down with them, he talked with them, he gave them attention and time. Yeah. So you have to really think that he showed them love. The same thing that he tells us that we're supposed to show. Right. It was the religious leaders and the people who wanted to keep power and wanted to keep doing their own thing that really had a problem with Jesus. Yeah. And so I think too many times in our lives as believers, those of you who are believers that are watching this program, too many times we like to we like to take that as a license that we don't have to show love towards people. Yeah. If we're mean to someone say, "Hey, you need to get saved or you need Jesus or you need heaven." And they get mad, we go, "Well, God said that, you know, right. if they hate me, you know, they hate him, they're going to hate me." And that's wrong. Yeah. Because you're not approaching it the right way. Your physical Growth has been stunted in that way to where you're not letting your heart out. Yeah. Because, you know, Leslie, one of the biggest things in the body of Christ is, and you know this, God is always going to ask you to step out on that limb, step out on faith. He's going to stretch you. Absolutely. He's going to take you places you never thought you would be in a yeah. good way, yeah. in an uncomfortable way, mm -hmm. in order to make these things happen. But this is where it starts, realizing that you're not just on a physical path and you can't let your physical self control your destiny, control your life, that in, you have to step up spiritually Spiritually, and you have to give yourself over to God. So you might be asking, where did this split happen? Where yeah. did we start concentrating on the physical and stop concentrating on the spiritual? Yeah. Well, that's a part of the journey of yeah. creation. And when we were first created, you know, it says in the beginning, God created the earth. Well, we know that everything that God created about the earth was good because he yeah. said it at the end of the day, right? Yeah. <laughs> he it said it good. was good, right? Yeah. And when we were created, when mankind was created, we had three things. We had significance, mm -hmm. we had safety and security. Yeah. Adam and Eve didn't wonder if the lions were going to attack them. They knew that they were safely in the hand or the garden of God. Yeah. And they also had belonging. It tells us that every afternoon, God came and walked with them. They knew that they were his and mm -hmm. he knew that they were theirs and they had that sense of belonging. But then... The serpent entered the garden. You know, I have to throw this in there real quick because I was just thinking this. Okay. They were so comfortable mm -hmm. that they walked naked. Absolutely. Now, tell me how many of you out there are so comfortable you could just stroll down the road naked. Okay? Yeah. This is how comfortable they were with God. Yeah. Didn't okay. even know they were naked. But Didn't even know what naked yeah, was. Yeah, exactly. They're naked. I'm not naked. Exactly. And so, but then, dum dum dum. Here came the serpent. That's exactly right. And with yeah. the fall, those three things became yeah. rejection instead of belonging, weakness and helplessness yeah. instead of that um, safety and security, yeah. and guilt and shame. Yeah. And those things really affect not only them because they were sent out of the garden, they had to toil for their food and for yeah. their livelihood, and they felt shame. And we know that they felt that instantaneously yeah. because when they heard God doing his morning walk among the garden, it says immediately they realized they were naked yeah. and they were ashamed. So the fall is what we're still dealing with today. Yeah. That is the battle and that is where we are. We went from being these significant, belonging, secure, spiritual beings to a rejected, shameful, weak, yeah. physical being. But the beauty of it is, is the battle technically is over. Yeah. Jesus won, by the way. Absolutely. And that's what it is about. And that's what this whole series is about. And we have talked about some really difficult yeah. subjects. I mean, we had some really tough discussion in chat last week. Yeah. We had some really good discussion about body image. And one thing that became evident as we've been doing this identity theft series is in one way or another, and sometimes in all ways, a part of us has been stolen. All of us. All of us, each yeah. one of us deals with some kind of theft, whether it's whether we feel like we don't belong, whether it's like we don't feel like we have significance, or whether it's that we don't feel we're safe, we don't, we don't feel peace, we don't feel that security. 
And so what I want to tell you tonight and what we want to tell you tonight is it's just not true. Yeah. It's just not true. Because when Jesus took those nails on the cross and when he died, he died for you and for me, whoever you are out there that is listening. And what he did was he restored us back to our beginning. So we were no longer helpless, hopeless human yeah. beings. We were restored. And this is about taking back our identity through Christ. Yeah. And that's where we are. Let's yeah. see, you know, we're on this journey. We've talked about the past, we've talked about uh, the present, we've talked about the physical, we've talked about the spiritual, we've talked about sexual identity, gender, we've talked about all kinds of things. But what it comes down to basically is your individual journey. And, you know, our tagline, of course, is you are not alone. And that's very true because you're really not. No matter how often you may feel that way, you need to realize that you're being lied to, yeah. that we are here for you. You have, man, there are all kinds of people that are out there that want to support you. You just have to reach out. Contact us. We're yeah. here. And as you're on this journey, we want you to know that even though you can't sometimes see people, there are other people that are in the same spot you're in. They're facing identical situations, and they want somebody to reach out to them too. Well, if you have two people that are facing the same thing and they reach towards each other, Suddenly, both of them feel not so alone. Right. So where are you at on your journey? As you're looking at this whole identity theft thing, as you're looking at a spiritual identity, do you know what your spiritual identity is? Because the Bible tells us we're either serving Christ or we're serving the devil. Which one are you serving and where do you want to be? Yes. And our encouragement for you guys tonight is um, step up, step yeah. out. And know that you're loved, first of all. Find your identity and take your identity back. Yeah. Satan does not have to be a thief. You can take back what you own, and you own that through Jesus Christ. So tune in next week. We're going to be talking about a whole new series, and yeah. we'll post a promo about what that's going to be. And Saturday night, if you're online, listen to us at 1043thebridge.com, where you can hear our three points in three minutes. Yeah, we call it the three in three. So if you're around the Pineville, Alexandria, Louisiana area, you can tune in or, you know, stream it online, 104.3thebridge.com. And we appreciate you guys taking your time out to be with us. We, we hope we've been an encouragement, and uh, we love you. And as always, you, you are, are not, not alone. alone. Good night, guys. Have a good night. Don't care why you feel like you could fly.